Hello, and welcome to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. Today, we are going to look at another Tudor portrait and the propaganda behind it. Because, of course, the Tudors were masters of propaganda. If you are new here, very special warm welcome to you. My name is Heather. I've been podcasting on Tudor England since all the way back in 2009. This channel here is where I put all of my podcast episodes from all of my shows, as well as loads of extra content like this video right here. Quick reminder again, I say this every day, TudorCon is getting closer. Um, it's about seven weeks away, give or take. You can still get tickets to come in person. Englandcast.com slash TudorCon will get you there with all the information you need. To, it's three days of learning, feasting, new friendships. The whole thing, super awesome, englandcast.com slash TudorCon. You can also come, of course, via the magic of the interwebs, which is the streaming ticket, where we stream everything. You get a digital goodie bag. It's super awesome. You get all the recordings, all the transcripts, englandcast.com slash TudorCon online for that. I have more time for the streaming ticket because you can buy that all the way even up while it's going on. But for the in-person tickets, I will have a deadline uh, in about a month, because I need to finalize the number for caterers and you know make sure I'm ordering all the right number of supplies and everything. So you do have a deadline on that. If you're a procrastinator, I see you, I validate you, and it's getting to be go time. All right, that's that. So look at this portrait. Look at it. Just look at it. Will you just look at it? We've got the beautiful family of Henry VIII. This lovely portrait from 1545 shows Henry with his son, Edward his favorite wife, Jane Seymour, and his two daughters. There are two other mysterious figures in the background. That would be Will Summers, Henry VIII's fool, and Jane the Fool, who was fool to both Anne Boleyn, Mary Tudor, and Catherine Parr. They are in the background outside the archways that look out over the city of London, showing us the King's Garden, outlined in the Tudor colors of green and white, showing the scenery of London with parts of Westminster Abbey, and the king's great tennis court, just barely visible. The artist is unknown, but there's a strong influence of Holbein. The painting was once originally displayed in the presence chamber at Whitehall Palace. So what is happening at this time in Henry's life that would have influenced this painting? Well, for one, Jane Seymour had been dead for like seven years at this point, eight years. And Henry was now on his sixth and final wife, his third wife after her, Catherine Parr. Let's look at what else is going on in the life of Henry. To start with, he's getting very, very old. He would die in two years. He's pretty miserable. His leg is still injured from his jousting accident nine years earlier. And, you know, there's stories about how Catherine had the unenviable job of having to be his nursemaid. Now, she was a lot more than that. She was the first woman to ever publish a book in England under her own name. Um, she's a, a very awesome woman. So there's been a lot of research on her after that. But she is often portrayed as you know the nursemaid and the one who had to take care of him at the end. And I'm sure there was some of that going on for her. And we can only imagine how uncomfortable that would have been for him. He was this strong and virile man who saw himself as this you know powerful, the most handsome man in all of Christendom, the most handsome king, um, won tournaments, was athletic. And now here he is with with this situation going on. But there's none of this evidenced in the painting, though. We just see this lovely, elegant, shapely leg outlined in white hose. Doesn't it look beautiful? Just look at it. Um, so, of course, there's none of that. Henry just looks strong and powerful. Also in 1545, Henry's kingdom was threatened when the French sent an armada that was larger than the Spanish armada would be a generation later. So the armada that France sent was 30,000 soldiers in more than 200 ships. Henry was constantly on the defensive after his break with Rome and dissolving the monasteries. All of the good Catholic rulers of Europe saw an opportunity to get on the Pope's good side and perhaps enjoy some extra kudos in purgatory and gain some land and prestige in the process. England was constantly on the lookout for invading forces. That's one reason why the, the marriage with Cleves was important, was seen as important to have an ally who was also Lutheran. Because all of the Catholic states, the Spain, France, Italy, the Holy Roman Emperor, were always kind of going after England. This period, 1545, was a period of immense buildup on the southern border of defenses, of um, beacons, all of that going on. And it was during this battle with the French Armada that Henry lost one of his earliest and favorite warships, the Mary Rose. 
now of course they've found the Mary Rose and there's a whole museum about it. Um, but the Mary Rose was was sunk during that battle in the Salent. So here's Henry. He's old. He's obese. His son is still a child. He has a leg injury that's leaking all of the time. His empire is under constant threat and he just lost his favorite ship, named after his sister, apparently, who also has died. But that is not what he wants to portray to people who have just entered his presence chamber. Oh, no, no, no. He wants to show that the succession is assured. He wants to show his son strong and robust, just like his father. Of course, Edward would die when he was still a teenager. Although there's not a lot of evidence that he was sickly as a child, but, you know, Henry wants to show him being strong and robust. He wants to show his daughters as part of the line of succession, just in case something happens to his son. He wants to show his happy family with his luxurious surroundings. Yes, I may have dissolved the monasteries, and you might not like that. But just look at how wealthy I am now. Look at my tapestries on the walls. Look at the carvings. Look at the rug on which I put my kingly feet. Look at my jewels. Look at my codpiece. Look and weep because I am mighty King Henry. You think you can invade my country? I'm sorry. I stood up to the Pope. I risked everlasting damnation. I talked to God himself. Like, I have no time for your hollow little threats and your, you know, plotting and your intrigue. Oh, no, no, no. Just look at this dynasty. Look how secure we are. We do not give a damn about your whole religious thing going on and this threats from the Pope. We have tennis courts and shapely legs, right? Indeed, this portrait of this family makes everything look so hunky-dory and so secure. You would have no idea just what a crappy time this was in Henry's life, would you? Which is, of course, how he wanted it. That concludes this lesson on this particular portrait. Thank you so very much for watching. If you have made it to the end of this video and enjoyed it, I hope I earned your subscription to my channel and a press of the like button, where I put out videos like this almost every day. It really helps me grow the channel and reach new listeners. And who doesn't want their YouTube algorithm tutorified? Am I right? Remember to stay hydrated. It's hot out there, folks. And I will talk to you again in the next video.